If I asked you what Adam Lambert, Chris Daughtry, Jennifer Hudson, and Clay Aiken have in common, you might answer that they were all on American Idol. And you'd be right. But to be more specific, they actually all lost their respective seasons, yet they grew noticeably more successful than the people who beat them. Aside from a couple exceptions, Idol winners tended to fade away fairly quickly. Compare Season 8 finalists Adam Lambert and Chris Allen, the latter being who won. Adam Lambert's first record after losing Idol debuted at number 3 on the Billboard charts. It sold 200,000 copies in the first week, eventually selling almost 2 million. He appeared on the cover of Entertainment Weekly, Rolling Stone, was nominated for a Grammy along with 48 other awards, winning 29 of them, and now works as the frontman for friggin' Queen. Now while Chris Allen's had moderate success, his post-idol career is far more subdued. His first album on a major label debuted at number 18, selling just over 80,000 copies and eventually hitting around 350k. He continued to release albums with lower and lower sales, and has been nominated for four awards to date, winning one of them. And while he continues to tour and release music, there's no real comparing him to Adam Lambert. You might want to call this anecdotal, but let's compare some more. In 2003, Clay Aiken took over the world for a hot minute. He had the highest selling debut for a solo artist in 10 years and reached double platinum in just a month. He appeared on Saturday Night Live, The Tonight Show, Jimmy Kimmel. He took the world by storm. It's easy to forget that he actually lost American Idol to Ruben Studdard, who's had some success but isn't anywhere near the phenomena that was Clay Aiken. There's also Chris Daughtry. He's been a household name for over a decade. His first album after Idol reached number one on Billboard, and he remains the third most successful Idol contestant after Kelly Clarkson and Carrie Underwood. And keep in mind that he actually came in fourth place during his season. This third runner-up did better than the overwhelming majority of Idol winners. And let's not forget Jennifer Hudson. In season three, she placed seventh, yet continues to outshine winner Fantasia Barrino. Barrino's still done well for herself, but Jennifer Hudson's a media staple. She's taken home an Oscar, a Golden Globe, and two Grammys with one being for her debut record. So why does this happen? Well, the best starting point is asking exactly what Idol winners get. For a while, the prize was described as a million-dollar record deal, which may be for up to six albums. It also comes with a sizable cash advance, plus representation from the 19 management company, which is owned by American Idol's creator. Sounds great, I guess, but what does it actually mean? Maybe locking in new artists keeps them from major players in the industry? This is a common idea I see float around. It would make sense that runner-ups get snatched by better labels while the winners are locked into a shitty contract. However, 19 Management actually has the exclusive rights to sign all contestants. And if you look at the studio debuts of winners and runner-ups, with a couple exceptions, they're usually signed to related labels. And they're often there for a similar amount of time. So if that's not it, then what? Well, maybe it can't be broken down to one thing. There's a few examples of what might hold an idol winner back. One of them is how closely regulated the contestants are when they're on the show. The audience is sold on an image that the producers create. But once the contestant wins it can show off their true self, it might not be as appealing to a mainstream crowd. It's notable to point out that this is also one way that a reality show can be rigged. If they decide they don't want somebody to win, all they have to do is make them sing in a key they're not good in, or a genre they don't usually do. There's also the factor of songwriting. On the show, everybody sings covers, but on a studio album, they're expected to release their own songs. Just because Taylor Hicks has perfect pitch doesn't mean he's a better songwriter. Vocals are only one part of the band. Adam Levine might have a better singing voice than Billy Corgan, but does that necessarily mean that Maroon 5 is a better band than Smashing Pumpkins? This also works for the very rare examples of when an idol winner actually takes off. Carrie Underwood won season 4 against Bo Bice. Bice's debut sold well, but it was poorly received by critics. He might have been able to get far on his singing talent, but he proved to not be a great songwriter. At least not good at appealing to the mainstream. Speaking of genre, that's also a big factor. A runner-up could have released the right style of music at the right time. Winning a singing contest doesn't mean your genre matches the current trend. Let's go back to Clay and Ruben. Ruben leaned toward gospel and R&B, whereas Clay was more modern sounding pop. Maybe Clay's style was more marketable and had a broader appeal. Similarly, Chris Allen was acoustic rock and blue-eyed soul, while Adam Lambert was doing dance and electropop. And as somebody who was in high school at the time, I definitely heard people my age listening to more of Lambert's style. So the answer could be more related to how poorly a singing contest prepares you as a pop star. An idol winner is mostly crowned for one talent, but being a star requires more than that. There's persona, songwriting, genre relevance. When it comes to the factors beyond singing ability, it might turn out that the runner-ups have them a little bit more than the winners. They just couldn't properly display them while they were on the show. Chris Allen's voice might have a broader appeal, at least for the idol crowd, 
but Lambert can go farther with what he has. You might personally prefer Alan, but which of the two could you imagine on Broadway or subbing for Freddie Mercury? I know who I'd pick. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you have a different theory, make sure to let me know in the comments below. Want to give a huge thank you to my patrons with an extra thank you to my top tier guy, Stephen Walk. Make sure to like and subscribe, and if you'd also like to support the channel, link is in the description below. Thanks again for watching, and make sure to spay and neuter your family.